everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today we're going to be playing through Clockwork Knights on the Sega Saturn, a side-scrolling platformer, and a pretty decent one at that. Uh, what we're going to be doing here, though, is actually mixing things up. Normally when I do these Let's Plays, I play on the normal difficulty mode, uh, but today we're going to actually be playing on the hard difficulty, which has honestly been giving me some trouble as far as smooth runs are concerned. Um, but yeah, you actually have three different difficulty modes, basically easy, normal, hard, uh, but we're going to be playing on the hard difficulty setting. Uh, you can crank your lives up to six if you want. Uh, three is the bare minimum. Uh, you can change your controls as well. I'm not going to do that. If, uh, if you hit the R key, you can actually go to your sound menu, which gives you some stereo and mono options, uh, a sound test menu, along with a music player, which is nice. So I actually did not know to, uh, did not know that this uh, sound menu existed until today because it's not obvious how to access it. It doesn't tell you to hit L or R to go to it. It's just kind of there, and you have to figure it out yourself. So never noticed it before. But yeah, with that, let's go ahead and jump into Clockwork night hopefully we have ourselves a decent run here this has actually been a very very frustrating playthrough to do not because the game itself is actually really challenging but there's just a lot of kind of cheap enemy placement and you have to be really really disciplined in this game if you're not especially on hard mode you're just going to slam into enemies left and right and it's not going to be all that much fun uh, so that's exactly what's been happening to me in my my other recording attempts. Um, but yeah, it does have some interesting mechanics though. If you attack enemies with the B button, you just poke them. Uh, the enemies will go dizzy, and when the enemies go dizzy, uh, you can actually grab them and then throw them back at other enemies, which is great. So uh, you've got multiple paths you can take in a lot of levels in this game. Uh, on this one, what I like to do is come on up here to the right to get ourselves our first extra life. We're gonna actually going to get a lot of extra lives over the course of this playthrough, um, but that is our first one right there. And again, I'm going to go ahead and heed my own advice and just take things slow. Otherwise, I'm going to slam into these enemies left and right. See, there's a helicopter enemy over there. Just wait for him to come towards you. And we're going to go ahead and open up this chest. This is going to take us to another room, and it's going to also warp us ahead in this level. This is one of those levels where you've got multiple paths that you can go. So right there, I could actually fall down if I really wanted to, kind of like this. Um, and uh, by doing so, we take the bottom path here, and we can go ahead and kill these enemies. Unfortunately, I can't throw those enemies at other guys because they're just one-hit kill enemies. There are enemies in this game that are one-hit kills. Uh, these coins right here, um, they can be used to play some, uh, some bonus games after each boss in the game. And what I just grabbed there was a silver crank. You have three different crank types. You have bronze, silver, and gold. Uh, the bronze and silver just replenish your health. The gold is the most valuable one, uh, which will allow you to not just replenish your health, but also extend your health bar. And each gold crank you get extends your health bar by one, up to five. And uh, we can go ahead and pick up these enemies and then throw them back, or just use our crank. By tapping the B button multiple times, uh, our character here will actually spin his key around, his sword. And uh, what we can also do here, if we want, is uh, sort of speed run our way through the levels. Uh, you can actually rush through these levels really quickly. Double tapping in any direction allows you to run. And uh, just rolling through these levels really fast like this is super fun. One of the most enjoyable things about this game. Uh, so when you get really good at the game, you can try to speed run it if you want. And what we're going to do here is try to earn ourselves an extra life. Uh, on the top of the screen there, where it says clockwork up top, you'll notice that one of the letters is grayed out. And that letter is the letter that you want to land on, on these scrolling letters here to the right. Uh, if you hit that checkerboard pattern area, or if you hit the wrong letter, you don't get anything. The bonus game cancels itself out. Uh, what I like to do is get the, uh, you know, right in front of that pole, and then just analyze the letters as they're scrolling along the floor. It says clock, then work, then clock, then work. Uh, pretty easy to figure out, actually. You just have to take your time. That's the thing about this game is, you know, even though speedrunning it, when you get good at it, is kind of encouraged because it's fun, uh, it's not what I recommend on a first playthrough. Uh, one thing we can do right here is actually run and then jump and tap this button uh, to reveal this spring, which allows us to jump up here and uh, get us some invincibility. Now, there's a trick right here to get ourselves another extra life. We need to take this bottom path here, and if we do so successfully, we get ourselves an extra life. And there's a silver crank right there. Go ahead and hit that red clock. The red clocks will die instantly. The blue clocks appearing later on in the game take a lot of hits, and they're honestly a little frustrating to deal with. So we can actually crank our way into those boxes. That's going to be a mechanic we're going to be using a lot over the course of the playthrough. 
And so this is a section where you can go either left or right. Left just reveals some uh, some bonus icons. I don't think you can push this block here, um, but if it's possible and uh, there's someone uh, someone watching that knows how to play this game, definitely let me know in the comments section down below. There's also another one to the right, and uh, again, I don't think you can move it. I've tried and it just doesn't do anything. But this is our first gold crank. And so now we've got four blocks of health. So in Clockwork Night, you want to try to make sure to not die. I know sometimes easier said than done. Um, and this is one of the blue clocks I was talking about. Now, when you attack enemies in this game, you notice that stars will appear around their heads. And, uh, you know, they do eventually wake back up. So it'll go from three stars back down to two, back down to one, and then they wake up and then you can take damage. So you don't want to try to pick up enemies unless they've got stars floating around their heads. Another little trick here is you can actually poke your way through these blocks to pick up power-ups like that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this right here. This is a bronze crank. It gives me uh, one of my blocks of health back. And I'm going to go ahead and just sort of jump through this. Notice that when you bump your head on the ceiling, you don't actually, like, make a clunk sound or anything. Your character will actually continue moving without, uh, you know, being deterred by the ceiling, which is quite nice, actually. And one thing I'm going to do here is actually try to just run past these clocks. Uh, and I failed. But those clocks are really difficult to deal with. On They're a hard mode exclusive right there. On normal mode, you don't have those clocks. Or if you do, it's not two of them back to back. I'm gonna go ahead and just crank that guy, and then uh, basically just kill him. And it looks like we need another C. So it's clock work, and then clock work. So there we go. Six lives already. And uh, this was our second level. And so basically the structure of the game goes two regular levels, then a boss level. Then two regular levels, a boss level. And it does that four times, and then you go to the final boss. So you only have eight regular stages in the game, and then five boss fights in the game. So it's not a horribly long game. Not a horribly long game at all. Uh, this is actually one of the trickier bosses in the game, though. And so what I'm going to do is hit him when his hat is on the top of his head, and then move out of the way. And then when he lands, his hat always tips forward. And I do not want to touch his hat when it tips forward. It hurts me. So wait for the hat to go back on his head, and then crank up like so. And he's just going to do the same thing again. Oops, and I wasn't paying attention, so just get over to the right, just like so. He has a tendency of landing near the middle of the screen. So hit him once, and then crank up, and then get out of the way. His hat can hurt you when it lands there like that. Move out of the way, and just stay to the right. Now I can hit him again, and then crank up, and then get out of the way. And this might be at phase two right now. So now what's going to happen is the hat's going to go back to the background. Every time I hit the head, the hat's going to try to smash me, just like so. So just keep moving one way, just like that. Keep moving the other way, and this will be our last hit, I believe. And there we go. We just beat the boss. And I believe I can even uh, jump on top of the hat. Ugh, just like so. So that's not the computer doing it for me. That is, that is me. And that's it. Boss one down. A quarter of the game down. Uh, if you will. So now extra lives in this game, you can get extra lives after you beat each boss. There's a bonus game that you can play, uh, and you can use your coins to play that game, and you can earn some extra lives from that. Uh, I'm not going to actually play the bonus game, because uh, it just eats up time, and I'm going to get a lot of extra lives over the course of playthrough normally. Uh, I'll probably end up with something like 20 lives by the end of the game. Let's go ahead and just do farewell. And there we go. All right, on to room or world two. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and skip through this because, again, the the room transitions and the level transitions, it's basically just filler. It's nothing too crazy. You have no control over it. Let's go ahead and grab this football here. So these knights, they actually appear late on in uh, normal mode, but in hard mode, they appear much earlier in the game. So I'm going to hit them three times, which makes them raise their shield. And then when they raise their shield, uh, I can hit them in the feet, and then that'll kill them instantly. Oops, I tried poking that guy, but apparently uh, hitting them uh, in the neck or the head doesn't actually do anything. You need to hit the body. Go ahead and just take it nice and slow here. Throw the football there, and I missed. And that's good, the enemies ran into each other. There's a knight behind me. 
you push the batteries into those little compartments, uh, you'll actually activate some uh, some mechanical objects, which is kind of cool. So just like so, push the battery in. I'm gonna skip the uh, the knight behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep moving. So now I definitely want to do this one, and uh, sort of just sit in here, just like so. And that's it. We can actually move our way up here, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually very used to the bottom path. So we're gonna go ahead and just take the bottom path. We got this monkey here, and when we activate the switch, he throws a bowling ball, which is really fun. On normal mode, these are actually bowling pins. Uh, they're not these, uh, these jumping guys that are really annoying to deal with. So the bowling ball goes across the floor, and it actually knocks over all the pins, and it's really fun. Go ahead and poke this guy once. One nice thing about grabbing enemies is you can just push uh, whatever you're holding onto into the enemy. I went ahead and took a hit there. Go ahead and grab him and then throw him. And this is it, so I need C. There we go, just perfect timing. I thought I was going to miss that, but it cycled over just at the right time. So we're up to seven lives now. And we're bound to get some lives here shortly from points. And go ahead and just skip through that. Alright, this is a tricky level right here. Uh, there's a constant endless pit below you that you have to watch out for. So you go ahead and just hit the switches. And you just crank up like that. Go ahead and throw that robot against that uh, helicopter. Otherwise, you might slam into the helicopter, which I've done many, many times. And grab that crank, uh, and I missed all these coins. You have to actually duck to access those coins. And I'm going to go ahead and just stay on this bottom path right here. Go ahead and hit that, uh, that switch. And we have to crank open these doors. If you don't, uh, the train will actually get pushed against the door and get knocked backwards, slowing you down. We can just jump forward like this to grab ourselves an extra life, and what I want to do is jump up top here, just like so. And there's some invincibility right here. Go ahead and crank this open, just like so. And if I wanted to, I can rush forward and destroy uh, some of these enemies right here, just like that. I'm gonna move forward, there might be another helicopter guy, yep. So I want to get rid of that guy preemptively. Now there's got to be a clock here, which is really aggravating to deal with. Throw the robot against the helicopter. So here's the clock. So what I'm going to do is hit the clock and then grab him. Or crank him up like that. That actually worked out really well. Oh, that was close. Not sure if you can get crushed by the trains. I don't really want to find out, but that was really close. I was really close to finding out. So okay, end of level. So one of the harder levels in the game is done. And there we go, we got it. Another extra life. Up to nine lives now. Extra life. So it looks like every 100,000 points you'll get yourself an extra life. So we're up to ten lives already. And this is our second boss fight. So we get to fight the Sega Saturn Transformer style robot. And there's actually a poster of him in the background if you look. It's a Sega Saturn at the bottom. Uh, so, two different ways you can go about this. You can actually attack him with uh, the enemies, or you can just run forward and uh, jump and attack, just like so. I've actually never seen him do that jump before. That was actually very interesting. So, my preferred strategy in this boss fight is just to run and jump and attack him. And you can just get a constant stream of hits. So, there's one, run and jump, run and jump. He's blocking, and then run and jump. Run and jump, just like that. You can do up to about a maximum of four hits. Any more than that, uh, he pretty much just flies right back off. And he just does this over and over, that's it. Gonna go ahead and just get rid of these enemies. Run and jump. Run and jump. Run and jump. Run and jump. Don't do a regular jump, always run and jump. So it's basically double tap and then jump immediately. And if you do that successfully, you'll do a lunging jump instead of just a regular jump. The lunging jump goes much farther, and it's faster. There's one. There's another. There's another. Run and jump. There we go. And that's it. He's almost dead. Notice I'm just running to one side of the screen, just like this. Otherwise, the enemies will land right on top of me. 
Just get rid of them. Run and jump, run and jump, run and jump, run and jump. Boom, he's dead. Good fight. A very good fight, actually. I'm very happy with that. The last time I fought this guy, I took a bunch of hits because I mistimed my, my running and jumping. And of course, you have to attack as well. You have to time that, too. But the running and jumping is the most important part. Because if you don't run and jump, you're gonna you're gonna screw up your rhythm. You're gonna screw up the boss pattern, and then it's gonna be diff more difficult to take him down. All right, and just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and skip these bonus games. Go ahead and skip the map screen as well. All right, this is a uh, fairly tricky series of levels we really need to take our time on. Uh, for one, you've got ice physics on pretty much the entire level, which uh, can be very little, very difficult to deal with. You've also got more of these bouncing enemies, just like so. There we go. There should be another one coming up here, just like that. I'm going to let them fall into this hole right here. Gonna go ahead and pick up this football. And get a chain reaction going right here, which is nice. Unfortunately, it didn't hit that uh, that bouncing enemy, which is annoying. And you've got these springs right here. If you don't jump at just the right time, you will actually not fly up. So you need to actually make sure that you hold down the jump button when uh, the spring is at, you know, uh, its bottom most, or, or lower most, lowest most position. I don't know, English is hard. So we go ahead and just press the jump button while it's all the way down. And go ahead and just take our time here. I'm gonna go ahead and just crank. Just like so. Get rid of these guys. Boom. Nice little throw right there. That was actually really good. Crank these guys up. Get them out of here. And there's gonna be a silver crank down below. I'm not gonna worry about it because my life is already full. But what I will do is actually come this way. Because we might be able to get ourselves another gold crank. There we go. Gotta go ahead and just poke these guys a couple times, then throw. Poke him, and then throw. There we go. Gold crank up to five blocks of health, or five gears. So I believe five is actually the maximum, so we have actually are, have maxed out our health bar. Going into these pipes is a little awkward. Uh, so you gotta be... Well, you gotta watch out for that. All you have to do is just tap up, but sometimes your character doesn't want to go up. Alright, so for these guys right here, I really want to just take my time. I want to be standing and attacking them. If I don't stand and attack, uh, I will not destroy their projectiles when they get thrown out. And I'm going to try to just run over here, and we can go ahead and push this soap, and then stay on top of the soap. If you stay on top of the soap, you have another extra life opportunity here. You can see the extra life right there, and we just jump at the right time, and then that's it. I'm going to go ahead and just run forward. And we need the L. Oh, I'm not gonna get it. Yep. I was way too late. This is ice physics. You know, the slippery physics just really messed me up right there. Alright, so the second level for this room or world is uh, much more tricky than the first one. The first one has some tricky sections, you know, with the, uh, the vertical platforms you have to work with, the silver platforms. Uh, again, ice physics everywhere so not only are they kind of small platforms but they're also slippery and so what we want to do is jump on these plates watch out for lots of helicopters on this level they'll just catch you off guard see there's another one right there jump up and poke we can land on this spigot we can land on both spigots if we want but the problem with landing on these spigots is that you know you've got a very very tight platform to work with What we're going to do is grab this crank and then just run and jump over here like so. Wait for this helicopter. Poke it. There's another one right there. And then we run and jump over here. And then come on over here just like that. There we go. Alrighty. End of the level. That was actually pretty short. So we're going to look for the L. Nope. Not going to get it. Okay. That's work. Got it. The L's are harder to get, same with the R's, because there's only one. 
Whereas with C, there's multiple C's, there's multiple K's, multiple O's, uh, but only one, one L and one R, so those are tougher to get. All right, so this guy's actually pretty easy. You just poke him in the legs just like that, and then we can crank him up. We have to watch out for, though, is the pot in the background. It comes back. And so once it starts moving towards you, you really want to jump. That we can land on it or go over it. Then you just go under it three times, and then he repeats the cycle. And that's the entire boss fight. So one of the easier bosses in the game. You really don't want to get him in the corner, though, because the pot has a tendency of just diving right towards you. So you want to kind of keep him towards the center of the screen. Yeah, there we go. Watch out for the pot. Yep, jump just like that. Wait for him to jump. Go underneath them. Go underneath them again. And then hit him in the legs. Just like that. Jump, just like that. Hit him in the legs, just like that, and then just crank. Now the bosses in this game, on hard mode, they do have more hit points as far as I can tell. So guys like this actually take a long time to take down on hard mode. Go ahead and just kind of let him walk this way a little bit. There we go. I don't want him in the corner. Now I want to jump, just like that. And then just jump over him, just like so. Poke him in the legs. Jump over. This guy just takes a long time on hard mode. But it's just rinse and repeat. It's, you know, it's not that hard. You just gotta make sure you're timing the, the jump just right when the pot comes back. Anyway, please die. He's dead. Alright, perfect. That was awesome, actually. I love how he dies on this this fight. It's it's funny. The sound effects with the uh, you know, sort of the balloon like effect. And there we go. Okay. So we're going to skip through the map screen again. And the bonus game, of course. Just hit farewell. And skip through this. Alright, so this first half of uh, this whole level is just super linear. Um, but what we can do here is actually lower this spring and then jump on it to get ourselves another extra life. One of the nice things about this level is that even if you die, uh, you can still get an extra life again and again and again. And we're just going to go ahead and use this spring to kill all the enemies up here. So we just bump it into the enemies just like so. But the reason I want the spring is not just for the enemies, but for this really nice secret area you can access. So we use the spring to get over this wall. And then we go down into this box. For tons of time replenishment. And then three extra lives, another gold crank. So if you've lost uh, your gears, you can actually get some of them back with that gold crank. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and just run through this. We've got a bunch of robots. Go ahead and just crank them. Just like that, just get rid of them. And do not get crushed, you will die instantly. I'll go ahead and just jump over that. All right, so these sticks of dynamite, uh, when you attack them, they have a tendency of, uh, t you know, ticking down and then exploding. Uh, if you get too close to them, you will actually take damage from their explosions, so you obviously don't want that to happen. But you can stay just out of arm's reach and you'll be fine. And go ahead and grab that with our sword. 
Gonna go ahead and jump over this guy. And I think I can make this. Oh, I did not make it because of the enemy. That was a very, very poor decision, so... But that's okay. Again, the extra life respawns, so, you know, if you're worried about your lives, then... Well, you can just get them right back. So, I'm gonna do the same thing as before. Maybe we can do it a little bit smoother this time, actually. So, we can hit that guy. We can hit this guy. We can hit that guy. Honestly, this is kind of broken, now that I think about it, because you can just play this bonus room over and over and over again and get tons of lives. You can just max out your lives. Just like so. And you can get your time back, too. Oh, actually, it looks like it's not. It didn't give us any... Uh, no, it did. It gave us the three lives. It's just... It's delayed. And there we go. So we went from 20 to 23 lives for free. Although we did lose one of our gears because we died. That's unfortunate. Okay, I have to run through here. Just use our crank on these guys. I'll go ahead and just kill that guy like that. And crank up here. I don't want to be too close to these guys, because I will take a hit if I am. Use the uh, the dynamite guys to hit the little teddy bears up top. Little teddy bears are really annoying on this level, because in earlier stages in the game, they take one hit. But on this level, they take multiple hits. Alright, throw him like that, and then... yep, got it. Alright, it's so a little tricky uh, section right here. But there's a gold crank, which is great. Go ahead and hit him. And go ahead and do that. And that was total failure. But that's okay. Very sloppy. We got some invincibility right here, which is nice. Three extra lives again. And I'm... Oh, I'm totally gonna die again! Why did I do that? Every time I get to this level when I do my Let's Play recordings, I just seem to fail completely. I'm just complete. I'm ex still... Ex I'm still in experimentation mode. Uh, which is, you know, a mistake for, you know, recording a Let's Play. Like, I need to have everything down solid when I do a Let's Play. And this is anything but, unfortunately. I mean, it's not bad from an extra live standpoint, but it's absolutely terrible from a gameplay standpoint. It's just very, very sloppy. Let's do this again. And do that again, and this again. Use our spring over here, just like that. And I have to get this a little bit closer. Notice that the spring bounces a little bit when you drop it. And we just go through like that. Do this bonus room again. I'll take all that time. And what I'm going to do here with these crushing sections is just kind of take my time. That was my problem, is just I'm rushing through without really thinking. And, you know, this is exactly what I talked about in the beginning of the playthrough. If you rush through... Uh, you are going to die. Uh, you need to do things just right in this game. So do not rush through. Even if you're really familiar with the game, there are certain parts that you really, really need to take slow, otherwise you are going to die, and this is one of those parts. Alright, same as before. I went into this uh, this level, I think, with 20 lives, and now I've got 31. That is just... it's so broken. But that's okay. That's okay. I'd really like to get that crank, but... Probably not gonna happen. Nope, we got it. Good. Alright, now I'm just gonna wait this time. I'm not gonna rush. I'm just gonna wait. Wait. Alright, now we can go. Great. That's a small one. That's fine. Another gold crank. Prefer to use these guys on the teddy bears. 
but so you notice how they take multiple hits now and when they go back into their their pot uh, you know they regenerate their their stamina I'll call it stamina so we're gonna wait for this to, to go down and then we'll wait for it to go back up and then I'll grab the invincibility and then I will run that's exactly how you want to do it so there we go so much easier it's not hard it's actually not hard at all all right another extra life we got the O which is very nice all right so the second half of this world or this room is uh, much more tricky it's an actual maze and you have to find the right path through otherwise uh, you won't make it through you'll run out of time you will die and you have to just do it over and over and over again so you're basically forced to figure out the route not my favorite kind of level design. Not really, have never really been a fan of these types of levels. Um, but when you know the route, it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do is just rush through. And we've got a particular box that we want to go into. And it's not either one of these. It's obviously not those. we got some more blue clocks, which are a little tricky to deal with. Let's go ahead and wait for this guy to, to fall down. We can go ahead and attack him. And then we're just going to crank these guys up. Because again... They have a lot of hit points. It's kind of tough to deal with them. And I'll go ahead and pick that one up. Then I'll throw him into that. <laughs> throw him into nothing. And then just, again, crank these guys up. So now we have three boxes. Uh, what we want to do is actually go into the second one. And don't hit the spikes on the ceiling, obviously. Spikes in video games are generally bad. If you're new to video games, keep that in mind. Spikes are bad. And this takes us into this... Uh, this uh, upstairs room um, if you go into another one of the boxes you actually go down below and you can have the opportunity to get all those time refills uh, but we shouldn't need that all right so there's a little secret right here as well you can actually destroy this clock and then grab this key to open up this door right here just like that pretty neat and we're gonna go ahead and just jump over here poke one of these guys and then go ahead and crank that guy up and then hit that clock. You can go ahead and just crank open this box. And what I want to do is grab this football right here. I'm going to use this to uh, kill one of these enemies. I have to take this part really slow. This is a very dangerous section. But I prefer to land on these platforms when they're down below. So there we go. That's our first little teddy. We want to go ahead and kill this helicopter. These helicopters are very annoying to deal with. Wait for him to come towards me, and then I can jump on this platform. And I'll jump on this one because it's down. Not going to try to jump on that one to the right yet, just yet. All right, let's go ahead and go for it. There we go, and we'll go for this one. Again, it's best to wait until these guys, or not these guys, but these these platforms are down below. And it's entirely possible for me to try to, to crank these teddies. We have to watch out for their projectiles. Oh. It's a very tricky section right here. Alright, let's try to jump on this. There we go. Good. Alright, we are good. Probably one of the hardest parts of the game, at least on hard mode. On normal mode, it's not too bad. But on hard mode, you've got those teddies that have just so much uh, HP. So many hit points. Alright, we gotta do the R. I think it was the first time we've had to hit the R, so I'm glad we got that. And on to the boss fight of this room. And then after we do this boss, uh, we basically go straight to the final boss in the game. So, wish me luck here. I'll go ahead and skip that. Now this boss here is, the first phase is a lot like Bowser in Super Mario Bros. 3. We basically want to just let him land on the ground, which pushes the ground down, and will eventually fall, fall through. Now he'll sometimes do an attack when he lands on the ground, so we need to watch out for that. We need to analyze his movements, but there we go. Three jumps, and now we're on to phase two. You, don't, you do not have to actually hit him. And he basically drops his head. And then we can use his head to toss into this weak spot with the X. X marks the spot. So now there are multiple phases here. 
first one he's going to do sort of a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and a Sonic CD pattern. Where all of his uh, floating parts, they spin around, they spin down. I'm just going to get over here and just wait. Patience is key on a lot of these bosses. I mean, and this game in general, honestly. And the reason I took a hit there is I just got really sloppy. I got greedy, as they call it in the Dark Souls community. You got greedy. Dark Souls will honestly teach you a lot about classic games, even though it's a modern game. Well, modern as of doing this video. It'll eventually become retro, and it's not there yet. All right. So a couple of other patterns coming up here. Uh, it's going to actually form some arms as well. And I got really lucky there with that phase. It's going to also fly down towards the bottom like so. So something I haven't mentioned is you can actually, uh, you know, throw objects upwards. You just hold up and uh, let go of the object when you do that. This is where it's going to form some arms. Just like so. Oh, that was bad. Very sloppy boss fight, but when he does this pattern, it means he's almost dead. And we can just go ahead and crank like that. And he's done. Sloppy boss fight. We, we got hit two or three times, um, but at least we did it without dying. And again, this is going to throw us right into the final boss fight. And a little full motion video sequence is going to play. I have 37 lives. Jeez. <laughs> and I didn't even use a cheat code. Um, from what I understand, there is a cheat code where you get 99 lives or 999 or something like that. And here we go. All right. Now this is a tricky boss. Um, so what happens here is his arms come down and you need to attack his arms. And when, when that happens, he takes sort of like his core out and he slams it against the ground. And then uh, on this first phase, basically, they just demonstrate how you damage the boss. So that was just that happening automatically. So now we have to just watch out for these arms. You walk underneath some of them, they'll, they'll just try to, you know, pincer you on the, the, the ground. We're going to move to the left, and we're going to go ahead and push this over to the right. He has a tendency of going towards the right after the first bounce. Now, the normal mode boss fight here and the hard mode boss fight is pretty much the same. I think it takes the same amount of hits and everything. And these are going to spin around a little bit. Then they're going to eventually try to, uh, you know, pin you down. So you want to just move one direction and then hit them just like that. He's going to do the same thing. So I always just move down to the left, move immediately to the right. Move this over to the right just a little bit, and then boom, just like that. And we just rinse and repeat. Now it's from this point on, his arms will start doing different patterns. They have a tendency of coming in from the sides after a little while. This one's gonna basically fling over down onto the ground like that. You can actually, you can see the arms go back into the background. So move to the left again, and then move to the right. Push this over just a little bit. And then boom, just like that. Okay, same as before, but now the arm's going to come in from both sides. Move to the left, and then move immediately to the right. Push this over. There we go. Just rinse and repeat. When you first fight the boss, it's actually really challenging, but once you figure out the pattern, it's actually not bad at all. Boom, just again. Do it again. Alright, run to the left. Run immediately to the right. Push this over just a little bit. There you go. And 
And we're just gonna do the same thing again. Now, some of the arms can be staggered there, so the one on the left sometimes might come in earlier than the one on the right, and vice versa. So you've really got to watch out for that. You just want to stay towards the middle of the screen. Alright, this might be our last hit. So let's do the same thing again. Okay. Alright, immediately to the right. Push. And then that's it. Boom. And we just beat Clockwork Knight for the Sega Saturn on hard mode. The final level in the game gave us some trouble, unfortunately. Um, well, actually, the entire game honestly gave me trouble. Not on this playthrough, but on my previous attempted recordings, it gave me a lot of trouble. But on this playthrough, it was just the uh, the final stage, which is not too bad. But there we go. It uh, tallies up all of our coins and then all of our extra lives. So this is not a game that you want to play for score because it's kind of broken. Oh, all you have to do is just loop the uh, the final level over and over again, get a ton of extra lives, and then beat the game. So that is Clockwork Night. Uh, this is our ending right here. It's not too terribly long. Uh, after the credits, it sort of sets up uh, the sequel. And uh, I guess the sequel pretty much starts off right where this first game left off. And uh, so I'll eventually try to get to that as a Let's Play. I know Clockwork Night 2 has a lot of other interesting gimmicks and mechanics in its levels. Uh, so it's definitely one you want to try out and you definitely want to play if you enjoy the first one. I enjoy the first one, so I'm definitely going to do that sometime soon. And uh, yeah, try to get a Let's Play knocked out for that. So yeah, again, with Clockwork Knight, the big thing is if you're trying to learn the game, you're trying to beat the game, uh, it's really about taking your time. There are lots of moments in the game where you can try to speedrun. Uh, some of the levels seem to be set up, you know, with speedruns in mind. But it's, you know, one of those games on a casual play where you're just going to slam into enemies left and right uh, if you're not taking things careful, if you're not taking things relatively safe. So uh, definitely take your time on a first playthrough. Uh, no shame in that. You can always lower down the difficulty as well to training mode. Uh, there are also some uh, stage select codes and things like that. If you want to practice a very specific level without having to do, you know, the earlier parts of the game, uh, that's an option as well. Also, get used to how your sword works. The sword is a little awkward to use at first. Uh, remember, it's got two functions. You can just, you know, poke it out with a, a quick swipe, or you can crank it. And cranking it is really good against those enemies with, you know, that, that take more than one hit. Uh, especially on hard mode where you've got things like the blue clocks uh, that just take many many hits so it's good to try to get used to that as well but yeah it's a really fun game if you got a Sega Saturn or you do Sega Saturn emulation I highly recommend checking out the game it's a solid platformer and a lot of people talk about this game as an early launch title uh, treating it kind of as like uh, something you can just sort of forget about but I think it's definitely one of the more unique Saturn titles, especially one of the more unique early Saturn titles, and it's actually a good game. It's actually well made. Um, it's just short. You know, this playthrough took us, uh, I don't know, probably about 35, 40 minutes. Not super long uh, for the kind of game it is, uh, but it's, it's a really solid game. I highly recommend checking it out uh, and then checking out the sequel as well. Uh, if you've never played the games before, you might also have something like a bootleg sampler. And these games are on the bootleg sampler, at least Clockwork Knight 2. I know that's on the sampler volume 2. So, you know, you can check that out and get a good taste of Clockwork Knight 2. Um, they both pretty much play the same and move the same, things like that. Um, but yeah, really good games. Definitely a worthwhile Sega Saturn game. So, yeah, not much else to say, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below in the comment section. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it really helps out uh, sort of the search discovery of these videos. It helps get these videos out to other people that might be interested in them. Um, also, feel free to subscribe if you're new to my channel. Uh, I do lots of Let's Plays here once a week at least as of doing this video. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of Let's Plays in the back catalog. Uh, feel free to sift through them. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you'll find something there to enjoy. Uh, for everyone already subbed, thank you for your continued support. And uh, I guess until the next one, guys, take it easy.